Greetings. Ni hao. Konnichiwa. Nawe skano. Ho. Privyet. Bonjour. Le homa. Namaste. Anyang haseo. Namaskar. Kalimera. Hola. Marhaba. Bonjourno. Good dog. Shalom. Dadui. Jin dobre. Vigate. Ciao. Dallas News Network's Global Health News. I'm Amy Wafel reporting. And I'm Alan LeCary. Telus is the Latin word for Earth. In the lead story, global warming is confirmed as the headlines in the New York Times reported that the ages-old polar ice cap is melting. It is now predicted by many scientists that the Earth is in the midst of a mass extinction due to rapid global climate changes. You'll find what Ralph Nader has to say about the environment. Watch people make a difference in the first annual Thames River cleanup in New London, Connecticut. You'll meet an environmental hero who's making a difference in Massachusetts. Hear words of wisdom from legendary Native American medicine man and global health spokesperson, Rolling Thunder. Take a trip on a Lake Erie school ship. Attend a historic moment with the Wyandotte Indians as they finally gain recognition as the indigenous settlers of Wyandotte, Michigan. In the Art of Life section, an inspired visual artist who is president of the Gulf Coast Sierra Club creates artwork reflecting nature. And see how one New England corporation is making a difference in the environment. And find out how you can make a difference by joining forces with TELUS News and tell us about the issues and concerns in your community. And now to our lead story on the current mass extinction and global warming. The headlines in the New York Times reported that the ages old polar ice cap is melting. This article is at the heart of TELUS News Network's focus as global health affects everyone, everywhere. The thick ice that has for ages covered the Arctic Ocean at the poles has turned to water, recent visitors there reported. An ice-free patch of ocean about a mile wide has opened at the very top of the world, something that has presumably never before been seen by humans, and is more evidence that global warming may be real and already affecting climate. If you can see changes in the ice cover, they can be suggestive of changes in the rest of the climate system. The last time scientists can be certain the pole was awash in water was more than 50 million years ago. Over the last century, the average surface temperature of the globe has risen about one degree Fahrenheit, and the rate of warming has accelerated in the last quarter century. That's a significant amount considering the world is only 5 to 9 degrees warmer now than it was in the last ice age 18 to 20,000 years ago. Scientists and policymakers are still arguing whether this is a natural fluctuation or an effect of industrial societies releasing heat trapping gases into the atmosphere. What I have been working on throughout my entire career is looking at a very broad scale how birds are actually moving around the planet. And I found that, the, that global warming is actually shifting the birds and how they are moving. The general public can be very confused about whether global warming is occurring or not because the media has made it fairly controversial. The point is that global warming is, is indeed occurring because we can tell by looking at the thermometers that are placed around the world. And indeed, those thermometers are telling us that it has increased by about one and a half degrees Fahrenheit over the last hundred years. So we know that the globe is warming. What the real debate is, is are people actually causing that warming to occur? But regardless of whether the people are causing it or not, there is warming going on, and that is affecting our ecology. We are having different organisms are shifting around and moving in response to this warming. The Eocene was the geological period when the world's climate grew significantly warmer, around 55 million years ago. According to sedimentary and fossil evidence, tropical vegetation spread inside the Arctic and Antarctic circles. Water and jungles dominated the polar environments, and in a generally warm world, mammals for the first time grew in number, size, and diversity. The issue of concern here is, the, is how rapid the world is actually warming now. The world has warmed in the past by as much as we're talking about uh, by this one and a half degrees Fahrenheit, but it hasn't done it as quickly as it's doing it now. And animals just can't keep up with how fast it is moving. Over evolutionary time, they could. Over ecological time, 
which we're talking about as far as 100 years, they can't keep up with that. And then in addition, we also have fragmentation of habitat. So in the past, if a species needed to move north, it would just shift its range. Now, if a species needs to move north, it may be running into a farm field or a freeway or a factory, and then it can't move. And what could happen is we could have, start having extinctions. Many people are actually predicting the fact that we are going to have a mass extinction. And some people have said that if people just all of a sudden vanished from the planet right now, that roughly 50% of the species that occur on the planet would still go extinct. So we really are in the grips of a mass extinction. And there is more and more evidence that humans have actually caused the warming that is causing the extinctions. Scientists at the Goddard Institute for Space Science compared data from submarines in the 1950s and 60s with 90s observations, demonstrating that the ice cover over the entire Arctic basin has thinned by 45 percent. Satellite images have revealed that the extent of coverage has significantly shrunk in recent years. In their models of climate patterns, scientists have long suggested the northern polar region would be affected earlier and more seriously than in the southern region. According to NASA climate models, the sunlight that is normally reflected off the polar ice cap is instead absorbed by the Arctic Ocean, causing even more warming and melting. They said the greater expanse of land in the northern hemisphere should respond more rapidly to temperature change, presumably leading to marked climate change. I have 30 years of data that are showing that the sandhill cranes are arriving 20 days earlier now than they did 30 years ago. And a fellow colleague of mine has 30 years of data, that, and he has found that the sandhill cranes are leaving roughly 20 days later than they did 30 years ago. That means then that the sandhill cranes are up here in the north an average of 40 days longer now than they were 30 years ago. That is indicating that something is going on globally. And now, if you also couple that with the information of butterflies in North America, butterflies in Europe, birds in Europe, trees that are budding earlier, trees that are flowering earlier, we have an indication now that indeed it's happening, happening globally and the thing that is happening globally is warming and I honestly believe that that is what is triggering these changes to be moving. Now some people have said that that may be due to the fact that people are feeding birds and they're planting ornamental trees so it's actually allowing the birds to find food and coming up. Certainly that's possible, but that sure isn't possible with sandhill cranes. Sandhill cranes aren't going to come to somebody's feeder. Sandhill cranes aren't going to come and eat somebody's crab apples off of their crab apple tree. So something indeed is actually happening, and the sandhill crane is a good one to actually help us understand that.